Welcome back to my channel. I'm Claudia Dean and today we're doing a question and answer which is really exciting, something a little bit different. You've all asked such amazing questions on Instagram so thank you so much for all your support. Let's get straight into it. First question is from Miss Indy and she's asked me when did I start to dance? I started to dance when I was four. I trained locally in Brisbane up until I was about 15. When I was 16, I then joined the Royal Ballet School in London, which was really exciting, obviously. Then I joined the Royal Ballet Company. I think I was about 17 and a half, so I definitely wasn't 18, so I was still very young. So I was with the Royal Ballet School and the Royal Ballet Company for a total of six years. I then actually decided to stop dancing and move back to Australia and now I'm here and I love inspiring dancers every day so obviously now I'm a private ballet coach. If you do want to hear a little bit about why I did decide to stop ballet and make the transition into the life I have now, I'm more than happy to go into that on maybe another video. Maybe just comment below if you want to hear about why I made that transition. The next question is from Meg Morrison and she has asked me, what are my goals for 2017? That's a really good question, Meg, because I absolutely love setting goals for myself. I feel every dancer should do that. I used to do it as a dancer and I still do it today as a coach. So one of my goals for 2017 was actually to create a YouTube channel. It sort of happened a little bit earlier than I thought, just because I'm always trying to create and think of new ways that dancers can go online and type in how to do fuetes or you know, how to master pirouettes. I think that's really important that you all have access to different tips from different teachers. And it's something that I wish I had when I was your age. I actually do have one really big goal for later on this year in 2017. I can't really announce what it is yet just because I'm in the process of creating it, but you're all absolutely going to love it. Uh, so definitely just stay tuned because that will definitely be coming out at the end of this year. Okay, now my next question is from Thorpey Pony Girl and she has asked me, how do you help keep calm? Oh, sorry, just wait. <laughs> She's asked me, how do you help calm down nerves before a concert or competition? Every person will require different things when it comes to dealing with nerves and dealing with excitement. However, number one is learning how to channel your nerves. So obviously you can channel your nerves in a direction that can make you feel anxious or stressed or worried about your performance on stage. You know, you're worrying about the pirouette and if it's going to happen. So you could channel it that way. Or you can also choose to channel them in a way that gives you excitement, makes you feel positive and also can give you that really exciting adrenaline. So there's two different directions you can go. I learned this really quickly when I joined the Royal Ballet Company, especially when I had to do these big roles, especially when you're in front of, you know, two and a half thousand people and the pressure does become quite intense. So I really had to learn fast how to channel them in the positive way. And it is really quite simple. And this is the part where it, it becomes quite personal. So obviously to make me feel calm, I had my own little things. So mine, and I know this sounds crazy, but mine, I actually had to have a, a block ballet skirt that I used to literally carry around with me everywhere. At all my Royal Ballet School performances, at my exams for the Royal Ballet School, my big roles that I did at the Royal Ballet Company, all those big moments, I would have this little ballet skirt. And I had this ballet skirt since I was 10. And I still have it today. It gives me good luck. And if I have that with me, it makes me feel really calm. And I mean, that was my way of helping to channel my nerves and so you've really got to find what works for you you might have to do a particular step before you go on stage or you might have to eat a particular thing before you go on stage or you could be like me and you need to take something with you before you go on stage and also just to remember enjoy your time on stage we train so hard for those moments so really just enjoy your time out there and if something does go wrong when you're on stage just keep thinking of you know how you can make it back up 
up to the audience. Don't keep thinking about the step that's gone wrong. Just keep thinking of new ways that you can excite the audience and make them feel like they're really in the moment with you. Okay, next question. And this is from Lucy WK. And you've asked me, will you do an Australian tour sometime? I actually love that question because I think it's such a good idea. I would absolutely love to do an Australian tour and obviously if I did that I would visit all the major cities in Australia that would just be incredible but if you do want me to do an Australian tour it's definitely something that I can plan so just comment below if you're interested in me doing that now this next question is from Emily Bignold and she has asked me from what age do you believe you should start full-time training now this could cause a bit of controversy but basically, in my opinion, I think you need to be about 14 or 15. I personally went full time when I was 15 and I felt like it was the perfect age. Going full time really young, so when you're 10, 11, because that is so common these days, I, I think there's actually a lot of pressure for kids to go full time because of social media and they see what kids are doing at such a young age. I think it's making people feel pressured that they've, they've got to be full time so young to achieve all these things. Not true, because you have to make sure that you're peaking at the right time. So if you're peaking at 12, 13, it's gonna be really hard to maintain that for the rest of your career. If you're peaking at you know, 16 before you're ready to go into a professional ballet school, that's perfect because that's what you want. Then obviously you keep growing when you get into the ballet school, so you keep improving. It's definitely important you don't rush going full time. And also just one other thing to remember, at sort of 10, 11, 12, your body hasn't finished growing. You know, you haven't really gone through puberty yet. There's a lot of things that can change. At sort of 15, you have probably an idea of how tall you're going to be. Don't feel like you've got to go full time young because you see other people doing it. It's really, you've got your own road ahead of you and you've really got to do what's best for you. So going full time at 10 and 11, I, I don't believe in it. I think you've really got to wait until later. I don't know why, but it's such a trend these days. <laughs> let's, hope it, um, let's hope everyone passes through it. Okay, let's go on to the next question though. This question is from Millie Hoppy and she's asked me, how many people have I coached? <laughs> Hundreds. I have coached a lot of dancers in a short space of time, especially since being in these studios. On my system, I think it says something around 300 dancers that I've coached in here. So that's just this studio alone. I also travel a lot sometimes if I have time. So that number doesn't include that either. So I coach a lot of dancers, which is amazing. I love you all. So it's it's great. It's, it's what I love to do. So now the next one is from Valerie Voloden. Voloden, sorry, I probably pronounced that wrong. Um, what makes a dancer good? What gives them that something that makes them stand out? Really good question, Valerie, because I've just returned from the Prix Lausanne in Switzerland, as a lot of you would probably know. And I was really looking at this actually because I saw you know, a lot of dancers that were really on the same level and there was just a very few that sort of just rose above that level. And what I found that really separated them was artistry. Not technical ability, definitely artistry and what character you can bring to the stage and what character you can portray to the audience. Even if you're doing a ballet solo, you've got to have something from you know here up that just completely separates you from everyone else. These days, as I was saying with social media, it's like everything's been done before now. You know, all the technical things that we see online, they're, they're amazing, don't get me wrong. They're so amazing, but however, it's all been done. You know, we've seen people with their legs up here. We've seen people do 20 pirouettes. So what's gonna separate you is definitely your artistry and character. You've really got to find yourself and work out what you want to bring to the stage and you've got to make it really individual. So you don't want to be like everyone else you really want to make sure you've got the spark and you've got something that you can bring to the stage that's completely different to everyone else. The next question is from Michaela Larkins and she's asked me what inspired you to start teaching and to create a YouTube channel. To start teaching, it was something that I did six months after I arrived back in Australia and honestly the first lesson I taught I knew I had to teach. I just fell in love with it. After I taught that class, 
I, in my head, I wanted to create something that was a niche and something that was completely original and different. And I knew that in my career, I used to gain so much from private lessons. When my name used to go up on the board at the Royal Ballet Company or at the Royal Ballet School saying that I had a private lesson because for a role coming up, I used to love it because I just used to gain so much from them. It was so personalized and it makes you feel special. So I really wanted to create my business around that. I wanted to create something, as I said, that was totally different. I didn't want to have a dance school. I just wanted to have something where I could coach all different dancers from everywhere and um, help them out and make sure that before performances and exams and their big moments that they felt prepared because they had someone in a new set of eyes looking at them that hadn't seen them before so that's really what I decided to do and I'm so glad I did it because as I said I've had so many dancers walk through these doors and I'm just so happy that it's worked out this way because it's what I love to do every day I can't even call it a job because it's just, it's fun, it's amazing. So that was the reason why I started teaching. And the other answer for why did I create a YouTube channel? This is solely because I want other people from you know overseas or from different states in Australia. I want you to be able to access my coaching because I always have inquiries from you know as I just said overseas and interstate. And some dancers can't get to my studios in Brisbane, so I really wanted to create an online resource where dancers could basically just go on, access my coaching and learn new techniques and also just get a feel for the way that I coach because it is unique and it is different. Um, so that's the reason why I did it. Now, this question is from Claudia Dixon. Good name, Claudia. <laughs> What's a healthy diet for dancers ages 14, 15, 16 and what should they eat? It really comes down to finding what food you feel like your body needs. I am actually, I'm 24 and I've only really just found out what I feel my body needs and mine is protein. And you'll probably find a lot of you are the same. So if I was to have pasta and rice and bread and all those heavy foods before I went on stage, I would honestly feel so lethargic. So all of a sudden I have this wave of tiredness hit me and that's just because of the food that I've eaten that day if it was all carbs. So carbs for me are a big no, no, not to have too many. So I'd only have, you know, a little bit, everything in moderation. I'd only have a little bit, but then my main focus is on protein because I know that that keeps me going. And so I could have, you know, a protein shake for breakfast, which basically means I put in lots of different fruits, nuts and chia seeds and also protein powder. And I'd mix it all together and I would find that that would last me until lunchtime if I was to have that at 6 a.m. So. That really works for me. Once again, this is what you've really got to find out for yourself because different blood types and different bodies, they all require different things. So, and the last question is, when you were younger at school, how did you handle schoolwork and dance practice? P.S. You're incredible. Oh, that's from Abby Jane. Thanks, Abby, that's really sweet. I remember at school and at dance practice when I was about 14, I remember finding it really hard for about one year. And that's the first thing I wanna to say to you all. Just remember, it doesn't last forever, that feeling of being really overwhelmed. It will only last, you know, about two or one year where you just gotta balance both. And then obviously you'll find a path and you might go full time and it becomes so much easier. But when you're going through that sort of overwhelm stage, my biggest tip I would say would just be to really keep organized and proactive and on top of your schoolwork. So if you get assignments and homework and all of that in you know one day, I would just say to complete them as fast as possible because when you sort of let it build up, it then becomes really difficult. That's when I think you start to feel overwhelmed. So, so for dancers getting their education up until grade 12. I think that is so important because you need it as a backup. So I definitely would just say, just be on top of your schoolwork and just remember, don't procrastinate and just do it. Don't think about it, you just do it. Now that was my last question. So I hope you've all loved the question and answer today. Thanks once again for all your support on my YouTube channel and on Instagram. You're all amazing. I read all of your kind comments to all the dancers I coach. But don't forget to like and comment and subscribe to this video if you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Love you all.